Hey everyone, welcome to Green Learner. So we have reached to the last video of the about the Spring Cloud Config Server from my side, right? So we have covered um, all the information about Config Server and Config Client, how we can use that and how we can read this and different scenarios we have covered how to load the default configuration details, profile specific details and updating the configuration at runtime, right? So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the official documentation that is provided by Spring itself, right? So for the some uh, advanced level configuration that is there and that can be suited to your requirement, right? So let me go ahead uh, there. So this is the info official documentation about the Spring Cloud Config Server that is out there, right? So Spring Cloud Configuration, you can get the information. What things that you needed to do enable config server is all that you need to uh, do for the config for your application to work as a config server right and uh, apart from this you need to give the server port and get uri all this information that you need to give right so uh, if you remember you can have a local file system also as a config property right so you can give that details right like this right so file and user home and this config property right So next in the application that properties you can mention the port also the port that you want to start and this config server git uri that you want to have so this is the uh, complete uh, information about the git repo that you have right so if I uh, come down here so I'm just quickly covering this you can just uh, I'll give the this link in description box also you can directly go there so this is the environment repository information how this profiles active and all this information work there right so so this is the name this is the profile active so dev mysql the configuration that is related to this information uh, that is related to this profile will be loaded into the config server right so this is the git backend how that works and this label and this if you have SSL certification validation, you can uh, disable that also. Skip SSL validation. Uh, in production cases, it is not recommended to do this because SSL is very nice to have uh, for validation, right? And uh, you can also uh, set up a connection timeout. So suppose your config server is talking to your Git repository uh, or any configuration that you have that you have configured, and it is taking too much time you can configure the timeout also right so it is get timeout properties there that you can by the it is in seconds so put seconds timeout is there right so placeholders in git uri you can have placeholder here application information that you can give profiles and label this if you need it right so, and, and apart from this you can also have this one repository per profile uh, pattern matching and multiple repositories like this git uri reports simple and this is special pattern so it will look for these folders that is there in your git repository and will load the information from there right so uh, to know more you can configure this your application uh, yaml and play around with this right so if you see any issue you can put that in comment section i'll be happy to help you out so this is uh, the thing that you can do pattern matching with authentication so for some time uh, if you are working in enterprise right so maybe your repository is secured that is there so you need to mention uri right and then username and password uh, to access that repository and then config server will do the rest so it will that use do the it will use that username and password and use this one so if it is secure and you are not passing username password you won't be able to access this one right so your config server will not work right so authentication with so there are different uh, mechanisms that you can use uh, to authenticate your repository that you are using as a configuration right so sss configuration using property so this uri node local settings host key host key algorithm and private key you can give so if you are aware of the github and you are also you will also be aware private key of sssh and all these information so that sss key you need to print here right like this that they have given right so these are the information that they have given here and placeholders in git search path search paths you can mention then this year which file name uh, you need to by default it looks for the application of properties and you can mention any custom uh, file name there and it will look for that one uh, the search path so force pull so 
at every time you are starting your application so you can uh, make this force pull as true so it will pull uh, that information from that get repo forcefully right so this is the pattern matching and this force pull all together so deleting untracked branches in git repository so if you are maintaining a configuration in git repositories there can be some profile files that are untracked so that will be deleted if you are marking that as true right so git refresh rate how frequently that the changes that you are making in your git repository is being uh, refreshed that can be configured from here this refresh rate version control backend file system use so you can use that file system also file username config repo right here server native search location profiles active like this right so vault vault is the very important uh, thing to have hashi for vault right so that is there to maintain to store to get and uh, manage the uh, secured information like password certificates and other important information right so you can configure vault uh, if you go here this is the vault by hashicorp this is very important to have uh, to maintain the secret information that you have right so i know about it so maybe in future if i get time i'll explain about you explain about this vault also right so you can configure vault with your spring cloud config server and then cloud config server will talk to vault and you can talk to cloud config server uh, to get the secured information that is there right so these are the information that you can use so that is this so these are the different options the different things that cloud config server provides right accessing through a proxy right so these are the information things and saving configuration with all application and jdbc backend cred hub backend so these are these all are the things that you can configure with your config server right so to get the information oauth2 you can configure and these are the details that are needed to pass in configuration this is the con composite environment repositories that is there right so these are the properties override that has to be there right so if you if uh, some property values are coming from the config server and you want to override uh, in your server in your client so you can do that uh, by using this right so health indicator information and if you pass this indicator you will get the full health information there right so server spring cloud config server health enabled false if you if you give this by default it is false if you mark it true so you will get a lot of information in your health when you are checking the health information of your application right so at least let me go ahead and show you this uh, health information right so let me move to this config server and inside config server in application yaml i need to give some information so we have mentioned management endpoint and so detail always and apart from this we will uh, give this information that is mentioned here spring cloud config server health enabled right so let me copy here and paste it here so we have pasted it here so it is yaml and you are copying this property so automatically gets converted into here uh, like this right so config server enabled health enabled so what we are doing so this is not required here so enabled to, so, we are, so this is the configuration to enable the enable the health so let me go ahead and restart the application and see the details so after this we will see a lot of details in our uh, health endpoint if we are accessing the health endpoint so let's uh, let the application start and see this in detail. Tomcat started on 8090. Let's go ahead and access the health information, right? This actuator endpoint is going to show you the health of the application. So all of this, all this detail is coming here, right? So disk space, config server, refresh scope and repository that it is using to load the configuration, right? So this, all this detail is coming right here. So you can mention, so you can see that here, right here, right? So move ahead again, health indicator and security encryption also you can use. So if you have password, you do not have to give that in plain text, you can cipher that and 
if that like this right so all these information that you can key management information also you can uh, store there in vault so these are the different and vast variety of things that config server provides right? so it is depends on the requirements that you have and then you can use that so let's move to the client one config client that they have right so this this also provides you a lots of information config first bootstrap information that i already have explained you discovery first bootstrap so if you're using eureka discovery client you can give that information right like, like this right so config client fail fast so if you have configured this uh, fail fast as true and your it is not able to connect to the third party service uh, that config server right so it will not start your config server config client is not going to start if you have mentioned this. by default it is false false means your application will start even if it is not able to connect to the config server if it is true it is if then if it is not able to connect to the config server it will fail right so config client retry this information also you can give right here right so then security information you can give right here if your uh, server is secured user and password you can give like this right so username password and this uh, to access the config server right so health indicator uh, like in config server i have shown you you can enable this right like this right so i already have done this and then i'll show you the health indicator how it looks like right so if i show you the config line so they have management endpoint exposure this 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 was already there i have added endpoint health so details always and this health config enable so if you do not know about the actuator and how it works i already have created a video and put that link in the description box you can go through that so i have added this and started the application i am going to directly uh, hit the uh, health endpoint right so this is the actuator 8081 and the if i go ahead and this is the 8081 port is the for our client right so it is the status of component client config server it is showing you the details prod and application properties so config client it is loading all these properties right so this case is paying references to all these details it is showing right okay so this is it about the uh, health indicators vault you can configure in your client right nested is involved all this information that you can have right so this was all about the centralized configuration management right? uh, creating config server creating clients and how we can play around that so you go ahead and play around this and see any issue and you have any specific requirement you put that in the comment section email me ping me do anything reach out to me i'll be happy to help you out right so i'll see you in the next video about uh, a new topic most probably i'll be talking about api gateway right so i hope you will join me in the next video right so you take care bye, -bye.